The Sturgeon Axeman is one of the two main infantry options of Sturgeon. This is one of those units the community thinks is among the worst performers in the game. Or maybe not as good as it should. But is the community right about that? As any other mainline infantryman, the role of the Axeman is to tank projectiles, fight infantry and in this specific case it can skirmish if needed. Before 1.7 this unit used to have a set of javelins, but now they bring a double stack of raider throwing axes instead. Obviously this 70 damage throwing weapon is a downgrade in comparison to a set of 5 javelins. Another very striking piece of equipment that was replaced after patch 1.7 is the plated Warlord Helmet. Instead, the Axeman now brings a Warlord Helmet over mail that brings a value of 48 Head Armor, ranking the Axeman in 4th place among infantry and 15th overall. When talking about the body armor, the Axeman ranks 7th among infantry with a value of 50 brought by the Heavy Lamellar over mail and 15th overall. A value above 50 is always good, especially when considering this unit has no shoulder armor. I am smelling cheapness, Dragonvad. This also has a drawback. Captain Perks like Athletics 250 skill Ignore Pain and Engineering 225 skill Metallurgy will give just an extra 5 armor instead of a plus 10, since this unit brings no shoulder piece. But we will decide later if the extra armor is needed or not. When considering head plus body, the Axeman will rank 6th among infantry, with a value of 98, and they keep the same position when considering all armor types. When talking about the equipment, it's hard to knock over the iconic Sturgeon Round Shield first, and in the case of the Axeman, it brings a reinforced large round shield. A very tanky 490 HP wooden table taken directly from your favorite Revel Brewery. Despite its look, that seems to allow for a lot of leg shoot, this shield is very good at protecting the unit, since archers haven't yet figured out how to aim at any body part lower than the waist. It also has just 70 length, way shorter than some of the shields we've seen lately, but it doesn't allow as many head shoot as the Batanian ones. For handling the melee duties, the Axeman brings a veteran warrior axe. It has 94 swing speed, 75 damage and a length of 62. This weapon is among the best for melee infantry as it brings all of what you want. Speed, decent damage and it lacks a few inches like your favorite southern empire lord. Now that we are done with the equipment, let's talk about the juicy tests and stats. Overall, the Axeman ranked 4th among infantry, with a total KD of 4.52 and a KD of 258.02 against low tiers. They ended up losing 567 units out of 3500 or roughly 16% and they also ended up with a casualty chance against low tiers of just 0.84%. It's a bit of a weird one as the overall KD is pretty low, but the stats against low tiers are insanely good. Now let's go ahead and list the pros and cons. Despite the armor of this unit being below average for infantry, the values of 48 and 50 are still pretty high for a tier 5 unit. The shield might be short, but as we described, it does the job more than well because of the archer's AI. The main weapon is very good. The 6 axes will add that versatility upside just in case we need it, but they are nothing exceptional. They are very good at killing low tiers, needless to say their melee performance is very good and they are the third best at dealing with tier 5 units. And they're good in Seagulls. I'll give this unit a 4.5 out of 5. Despite what most of the community says, these guys are still and have always been among the best infantry troops in the game. And the only thing stopping these guys from dominating in my impossible campaigns were legionaries and cataphracts with 200 HP. Patch 1.7 did indeed make them a bit worse than they used to, but these guys are still kings on the battlefield. Anyway, let me know what you guys think and what troop you want me to cover next. And Ragavan told me you might be interested in the video on your left next.